to do something about it that we can find ways to ensure that that house uh, doesn't end up continuing to be a problem as it has been. Um, when I read the news article I should tell you yesterday, I was shocked to see how many calls there were. I've seen police cars there um, at different times. I wasn't aware of how many times that had happened until I read the news article yesterday. So, interesting. Sunday night, um, you know, I live right next to the church, uh, we saw a lot of police cars all over the place starting at about 5 o'clock. Weren't sure what was happening. I was actually having a dinner over there at the house. And then uh, early in the evening, I received a call from Dave alerting me to a situation. Read enough, I'm sure, in the news to know exactly what happened. Um, about 10.30 or so, uh, we received a call from the police chief, Corky McQuiston, uh, and uh, one of the crime labs, I think, had just arrived at that time. And he said it would take hours for them to do their work. And he wasn't sure that they would have all their work done by the time that school started up again. You have to understand, if you're not from this neighborhood, the whole area here was completely blocked off. Police tape, police cars, all that kind of stuff. You probably read in the newspaper, some people were stopped to see who they were, what was the case here, and he couldn't guarantee that they would all be gone by the time school started. Um, as you heard upstairs, uh, just as good members of the community, we allowed the police to use our school to keep warm and to use as a kind of a base because of the situation with the, the house right across the street from. Uh, and then lastly, the question that I asked him at that time was, um, has everybody who's been involved in this incident uh, been taken into custody? And the answer was, well, no. At that point, it was no. And so uh, the police chief, I, Deb, and then Father Blake was involved in that conversation. We said, we can't take a chance with our kids. We didn't want them coming here with police lines and police tape and having a situation where there was a suspect. There was increased police activity in this area. It was kind of monitoring the place just to make sure things were going smoothly there. But um, probably about a month and a half ago, things started to ramp up again. Um, there was, I don't know, it was, I didn't see the paper this morning, there was a, a, a kidnapping across the street and stuff, so things have really sort of gotten worse. So I think we really need now, as parents, as community members, need to work together to address that place. Um, it's my understanding that one of the landlords was at a, a council meeting last night already sort of telling their side of the story. But I think that are not just us, but talk to any other parents of the school, talk to your neighbors, and we need to start flooding, I'm sorry, we need to start flooding the city council chamber with requests for something to be done. I think that's the key. Yeah, we lawn chairs sitting out there in the front of that place every day. <laughs> Call me, we'll get a cruiser to go by. Just the more pressure you can put on this landlord to, to say, this stops now. Those things like that, those little irritants that all of us probably have sat for the last three or four months saying, oh, look at this paper out front of that. Oh, look at that pile of garbage laying inside. Oh, that darn door is open again. When you start to see that that... I think it's certainly good for you to contact, if, you're, if, you, if you live within the city of Brainerd, contact your city council person. You know, this area is Kelly Bevins to make you aware of it, but I think it's important then, or maybe a core group of us, you know, with Father Tony as a spearhead, but a core group of us to sort of 